Hello and welcome to this new video. So we are still in section 0.3 and we will cover the subsection 0.3.3 about the acceptance rejection method for generating some kind of uh, random variables. Okay. The situation is as follows. Suppose that we can generate a continuous random variable with PDF G. PDF is probability density function, the density of probability. And we want to generate a random variable having another PDF F, another density F. And we assume that the ratio F over G is bounded by a certain constant C. Okay. Now we shall illustrate everything on examples. Okay. Then the accept the exception reject the acceptance rejection method actually consists of the following. So I will just give you the algorithm without a proof because the proof is a little bit complicated, and I will uh, refer to the literature to prove if you want to deepen your understanding. So here's the algorithm. So first. So suppose that we know how to generate a random number following a distribution G, a PDF G, okay? And you want to generate a random variable, a continuous random variable with probability F, such that F and G satisfy this inequality. Usually we take the best constant here. So we take the supremum of F of X over G of X, okay? So first we generate a random variable y, because we know how to do that by assumption. And then we generate a random, a uniform random uh, variable u, independent of y. And now we do a loop, actually. If the random number generated is less than f of capital Y over the constant, which is the constant here of the assumption, over G of Y, okay, so this is the first half of the interval because U is between 0 and 1. So if U is, so suppose that you divide, you can, so you divide your interval 0, 1 to two parts from 0 to F of Y over CG of Y and from this point to 1. So if U falls in the first interval, which is random actually, <clears throat> this is a random number, we take X equal Y. If not, we repeat. We generate another random uh, variable y and another random view, and we repeat the step until the random number is between uh, 0 and f of y over cg of y. So it's a loop, actually. Okay? And it's uh, we we'll see how to implement this, because there's no go-to statement in Python. But it's, it's, this another way. There's another way to... So 1, 2, 3 is a loop, actually. Okay, and then we return x. Okay? So one proof is, give, is given in the book of Croesi and uh, other uh, authors in the literature. So it's not terribly difficult, actually, but uh, we'll, it's better to implement it, actually, rather than the, to see the proof. Okay, now we will illustrate this algorithm on, on some example, okay? <clears throat> and there's also a discrete version of this algorithm as well. But we'll apply it only for continuous functions. Okay, suppose that we want to generate a positive standard normal distribution, okay? The positive standard normal distribution is given by this formula. So it's it, actually, if you like, it's half, it's one part of the normal. Okay, so it's zero up to zero, and then it's a decreasing bell shape. Okay, so we'll picture it in Python if you like. So why there's this constant here and not one over two radical, radical two pi as usual? Because actually the integral here of this must be equal to one. Okay, so the constant is different. So in the normal, it's 1 over radical 2 pi. Here, it's radical over, of 2 over pi. Okay. Okay, 
how to do that? Well, we search for something very close to having a, a similar form, which is easier to, that we know how to uh, simulate. So we first think of the exponential. Okay, so in form, the exponential is very similar <coughs> to this f. And let us see if the ratio of the two is bounded by a constant. Okay, so let us see. So we take g, g to be the exponential function. Okay, so it's uh, zero for x negative and exponential. So one, because we have, so lambda equal one here. Okay, it's so the exponential of one. Actually, you can take an exponential of any parameter, but let us be as simple as possible. We take the, if you take another exponent, an exponential of another parameter, it will work actually, the same will work, but this is easier. Okay, so let us do the ratio. The ratio, of course, when both are non-negative, because zero over zero is not well defined. But if both are zero, then the condition zero is less than constant times zero is also satisfied, so it's not a big deal. So let us see, let us see if this ratio is bounded. So when we do the ratio, we get a constant times this exponential. Okay, we call this ratio ratio, ratio h. And now it's if you take the derivative and do a study of variations as usual, you will convince yourself that h has a maximum value at once, so it's increasing, decreasing, right? You do it. It's a, just a high school exercise. So convince yourself that h achieves a maximum value at x equal 1. And the maximum value is radical 2e over pi. So actually, yes, so we found the constant. Actually, we, we found the best constant. The best constant is given by this radical 2e over pi. Okay? So the assumptions of the acceptance rejection method are satisfied here with this f and g. Okay? And so actually we can simplify a little bit here just to complete the square if you like. <clears throat> if you complete the square, you will get this function, right? Because you'll have some simplification. Okay. So here's the algorithm as a particular case of the acceptance rejection method. We first generate a random, an exponential random variable with parameter one. And we know how to we learn how to do that in the previous video. And then we generate a random variable uniformly distributed on zero one. We know how to do that. And okay. If the random number is less than this exponential, which is the ratio f over c, f of y over c, g of y, we set x equal y. Otherwise, we repeat. So there's a loop here. So we continue to generate random, an exponential, an exponential random variable and a uniform, and we check at each step this condition. As long as this condition is not satisfied, we repeat the loop until we have this condition. And then you exit the algorithm. Okay? So that's it. We return next. And I want you to implement now this algorithm for <coughs> uh, in Python, as usual. And there is another exercise that I wanted you to do. Was It's not necessary to implement, but you should do it because I may ask you such questions in the exam. It's not difficult, actually. The this, the gamma distribution with parameter alpha and lambda is given by this formula. It's very important, actually. It's the generalization of the exponential. The exponential, note that the exponential uh, distribution is a particular case. Just take alpha equal 1. Right? If you take alpha equal 1, you don't get a power in x. And you get here lambda. And gamma of 1 is 1. Okay? Gamma is the Euler uh, gamma function that you know. Okay, so it's an integral. It's given by an integral. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, so it's actually the gamma function here generate, it generalizes the notion of factorial, if you like. So gamma of n of an integer is n minus 1 factorial. 
Okay, so it gives the meaning of factorial to numbers which are not necessarily integers. Okay, it's very important to know that it's very important in applied mathematics. Okay, so the formula is the integral from zero to infinity of uh, t to the alpha minus one e minus t. Right. So this is just a constant here. Lambda alpha over gamma alpha is just a constant, which we, we need it, which we need in order to, to ensure that the integral is 1. Okay? <clears throat> so, the gamma distribution actually is a generalization of the exponential distribution. First, This is the first thing to know. So, it's important actually to know about the gamma distribution. It's very important. <clears throat> and second thing actually, uh, it's related to the chi-square distribution that you may know. From other courses, so it's very it's very useful. So I want you to use the acceptance rejection method to find an algorithm that generates samples from a gamma distribution. Now here you, you have to pay attention actually, because sometimes it's given in a slightly different form. It's give, it's given by gamma alpha beta, and instead of lambda you have one over beta. Okay. So it's important to, uh, so usually I think, so lambda is called the rate and beta the scale. It's very important when you want to to use built-in functions in NumPy and SciPy to distinguish. I think in NumPy, it's, you have to precise the scale, right? So you have to give the bet the one over lambda. Okay, so just pay attention to this point when, so just read about, uh, the syntax of the function, the built-in functions, in order not to confuse between rate and scale, <clears throat> because the same thing is true for the exponential. Right. Okay, so I want you to uh, do what, do something similar to what we did, and find an algorithm for generating a gamma distribution. Okay, I'm not asking you to implement it, but just to uh, to test your understanding of the algorithm. Okay, so this concludes uh, this uh, second video. And uh, in the next video, we are going to talk about distributions related to the normal distribution, which is very important. Okay, so thank you for your attention.